there is no crime called forgery. The crime that you commit when you're involved in forgery is fraud. Art has been forged for as long as art has existed and had a collectible value. It's no problem to make a copy. The problem is if you try to pass it off as something more valuable. This book is a journey into the criminal mind. These criminals are not hurting anybody physically. They are incredibly skillful. They have interesting and bizarre motivations for why they turn to forgery in the first place. They're ingenious in the way that they fool art experts. They're incredibly skillful in the way that they execute these works. But they're criminals nonetheless. And there's an element of the merry prankster, a Robin Hood element to them. The vast majority of them have a psychological profile that is fairly consistent. Most of them have financial motivations as only a secondary impetus for turning to forgery. Their initial interest was in getting a passive-aggressive revenge against the art world. It's a view into the mind of famous art forgers. It is about their methods, their motivations, and the stories of the most successful and interesting art forgeries in history. The focus is on art, but we also look at other cultural spheres, including forgeries of political documents, literary forgeries, even forgeries of fine wine. Sean Greenhalgh is the most diversely successful art forger in history. He forged everything from ancient Egyptian statues to 19th century watercolors to a Barbara Hepworth from the 1950s. He worked out of a garden shed, and after 17 successful years, he was eventually arrested. Sean was literally forging something at the moment that the police burst in. There were forgeries in progress. There were books open to the pages of objects that he had forged. From a criminological standpoint, it's very easy to explain why we should study art crime. Art crime is the third highest grossing criminal trade worldwide every year, behind only the drug and arms trades. If we let these forgers get away with what they're doing, then we're allowing them to rewrite history. I don't like the fact that they are involved in criminal activities, but looking through the criminality into the people, the person behind the crime, I think that's a fascinating way to explore the human mind.